Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church. We're located in Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's daily devotions where we read a chapter from the Bible each day together. And uh, we just think that's a good thing to do. That's what we're meant to do with God's Word is read it. And so we decided uh, some time ago to create these videos just as a tool to help people do that. There are other ways to do it. There are other ways to read God's Word daily. Um, and those are good. We're for all of the ways to read God's Word daily. Uh, but some people do struggle with finding the time, finding just developing that rhythm, that habit. And so we started creating these videos in the hopes that they would help. And, and they seem to be helping a lot of people. And so uh, we're thankful for that. We're reading uh, currently the Gospel of Luke. And today uh, we are reading... Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 is 50 verses, which is about average. And in Luke chapter 7, uh, we are going to see the faith of a Roman officer. Luke chapter 7 is actually a favorite of mine. Um, because in the first part, like the first half of chapter 7, first 14 verses or so, uh, we see Jesus interact with Two people who are in very different places on their journey toward Jesus. And we believe that everybody's on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that it's God's heart. It is His desire and His will that everyone, everywhere, come to a saving faith in Jesus. We know that not everyone will. But we believe that's what God wants for everyone, and we believe that's why He sent Jesus. And in Luke chapter 7, we see Jesus, in the context of His earthly ministry, interact with two people who are on very different places on this journey toward a relationship with Jesus. And we like to think about this as, uh, as like a number line. You know, if a saving faith in Jesus is number zero on the number line, and you've got positive numbers on one side, well, that's once you have a relationship with Jesus, that's growing in faith, that's being discipled. As you go from one to two to three, you're becoming a more mature believer. The negative numbers to the left of zero are people who are not yet followers of Jesus. But as they count down from negative five to negative four to negative three, they're becoming closer to being at a place in their life where they're ready to respond to the gospel and accept Jesus. And, and uh, I used Luke chapter 7 a lot to illustrate that. And we see Jesus meet people in very different places. We're going to see a Roman officer who already has very great faith. And his interaction with Jesus uh, reflects that faith. And then we're going to see Jesus minister to a woman who's just in a, in a place of personal tragedy. And her needs are very different. And the ears that she has to hear are, uh, you know, they're in a different stage of development as well. Uh, we're going to see um, a discussion about Jesus and John the Baptist after that. Then we're going to see uh, Jesus anointed by what the locals, the religious leaders, regard as a sinful woman. And that's going to take us through. To verse 50. So let's read now Luke chapter 7. It begins in verse 1 this way. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. And when the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to come and help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said, for he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. Jesus went with them, but just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I'm not worthy of such an honor. I'm not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. And I know this because I'm under the authority of my superior officers. 
and I have authority over my soldiers. I need only to say, go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. Verse 11, soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nan, or sometimes pronounced Nain, I think Nan is correct. And a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate, and the young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and he touched it. The bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God, saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and in the surrounding countryside. The disciples of John the Baptist told John about everything Jesus was doing, and so John called for two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask him, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? John's two disciples found Jesus and said to him, John the Baptist sent us to ask, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? And at that very time, Jesus cured many people of their diseases, illnesses, and evil spirits. He restored sight to many who were blind, and then he told John's disciples, Go back to John and tell him what you've seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. And tell him, God blesses those who do not turn away because of me. After John's disciples left, Jesus began talking about him to the crowds. What kind of man did you go into the wilderness to see? Was he a weak reed swayed by every breath of wind? Or were you expecting to see a man dressed in expensive clothes? No. People who wear beautiful clothes and live in luxury are found in palaces. Were you looking for a prophet? Yes. And he's more than a prophet. John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you and he'll prepare your way before you. I tell you, Of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of God is greater than he is. When they heard this, all the people, even the tax collectors, agreed that God's way was right, for they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in religious law rejected God's plan for them, for they had refused John's baptism. To what can I compare the people of this generation, Jesus asked. How can I describe them? They are like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends, We played wedding songs and you didn't dance. So we played funeral songs and you didn't weep. For John the Baptist didn't spend his time eating bread or drinking wine, and you say he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks, and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by the lives of those who follow it. Verse 36, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, uh, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, she would know what kind, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver, gave that to one person and 50, 50 pieces to the other. 
but neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. Simon answered, I, uh, that's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she's washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only a little love. And then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, Who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. That's the end of Luke chapter 7. Um, a lot... A lot happening in this chapter. Um, we've talked about the first half and, and, and a great deal of uh, powerful content in the second half a, as well. well. We'll let that speak for itself just because I don't want this video to become very long. Uh, I'll just say that I'm really uh, thankful that you've joined us for Luke chapter 7. And I hope you'll join us again next time for Luke chapter 8. God bless.